Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously a boy named Wong was born with unimaginable power and decided to hide his power forever. His parents then give him an amulet and a pill to suppress his power. Wong would then stop a demon's attempt at hitting Sun Ro with a meteor and he shares his crispy noodles with someone for the very first time. The story continues as students visit one of the biggest animation companies. They are responsible for several very popular titles but Chen only wants to know if they can train there. Mr. Tang allows them into BP Animation and they see that all the employees are extremely stressed. Nearby, the producer at the company desperately tries to call someone before being introduced to the students. She must nervously explain to Mr. Tang that the director has run away. Mr. Tang is furious as their next project is about to go online. The producer explains that the director was working on storyboards when he inexplicably ran out of his room. For some reason, Mr. Tang decides to give the last part of the job to the students. The producer objects, but Mr. Tang explains that all that is really left to do is review. He breaks the news to all the employees by telling them that viewers make the best directors and asks that they do as they say. Mr. Tang then explains to the students how each episode is overseen by a conductor, and then cuts her pest on to key animators who are good at drawing. Chen has criticism for one of them and the man explains that he is only the initial animator. The drawings still have to go through other people and several steps. The students wonder why anime is such low frames per second compared to movies and the man loses his cool. He vows to show them 24 FPS and Mr. Tang explains that the man is using the art of liver bursting. It allows the pen to move with its own free will but can't be used much as it does too much damage to the liver. The animation is now 24 FPS but Chen states that he plays a lot of games and would like him to make it 60 FPS instead. The once calm and confident animator loses control once again. Another employee arrives and promises to show them some 60 FPS. He works with photographing and explains that it uses post-composite software to combine drawings. This job cannot be done until all other materials are finished, so normally, photographers are in a state of dormancy. The students are amazed and the man explains that with the AI plugin, he can create FPS even up to 1200. The man is sure he has satisfied the students with his work, but Chen explains that he doesn't believe animations made by a computer have souls in them. This employee becomes enraged as well and Jinkei seems to sense something. Mr. Tang explains the details of making good scenes and asks for the students input. The producer begs that he stop though and explains that this current animator has been exhausting his liver for over half a year. Mr. Tang explains that the man can finally return home to his family after this last job, but Hago has erased his work by accident and the man gets to leave the world instead. Their surroundings change though and Jinkei explains that the total value of the world's spiritual force is dropping rapidly. This is because the company is losing employees quickly but Chen explains that he and the other students will help. He says that they listen closely to everything but the producer explains that it takes 30 years to make a qualified key animator. Mr. Tang points out how they were similar to the students when they first started and asks that she trusts them. The producer agrees and instructs the students on what to do. Chen is the most confident of them all but freaks out when he realizes he has no clue what he is doing. The others come to the same exact realization as even simple tracing is difficult for them. Wong animates all their pens though and the students notice that anything they think of is drawn by the pens. All their work then goes to a supervisor for finishing touches and approval. The supervisor deletes their poor work though and explains that she won't allow such twisted things to exist in her computer. The students are completely discouraged. Jinkei reminds Wong that the world's spiritual force value is approaching zero and the dimensions are going to collapse. With the blink of an eye, Wong comes into the real world and goes in search of the director. Wong makes his way through the building to watch everyone hard at work and enters the director's office to find him doing the opposite. The director tries to push his work back further but Wong forces him back to work. The director is actually quite good at his job and everyone's hard work restores the world to its normal state. We then get a brief glimpse of the conversation between the demon master and Mr. Richmond before his death. Richmond explained to him that Sumro is not the one that they should be targeting. Instead, the real enemy is the wolf pretending to be a dog. We watch again as Wong saves the day, but we now see how infuriated the demon emperor is. He instructs that the dimensional lamps be lit and the demon master does it. At the space station, Sunor wishes they could stay longer but then they walk into a section that turns them into 3D. Elsewhere, Yi once again speaks with the great masters of the human race and explains that they couldn't have an online meeting because of interruptions from meteors. The demons are rushing to the human world and most Star Squad members are busy evacuating citizens. 
Yi has an idea for a counterattack and proposes they use the Doom Formation that is right below the spatial crack that is currently allowing the demons to invade. The idea is to have someone with massive spiritual energy stand in the formation so that powerful lightning strikes will destroy all the demons. Their group member that is regarded as the world's number one spiritual force user never shows up to the meetings though. Sunro does a test to find that they cannot leave the passage forward or backwards, so Wong decides that he will just break the wall. Sunro is quick to point out that there is outer space on the other side, but Wong tells her not to worry. It is actually just another passage though, and Wong realizes they are trapped in a spatial cycle. Wong explains that Jinkai could break out of it, but Wong threw him way too far when defeating Mr. Richmond. We then see that the spatial cycle is actually the Demon Master's doing, and the Demon Emperor is pleased to see that it has trapped their greatest threat. The Demon Master explains that they are using almost all of the dimensional lamps to trap him there, and guarantees that it is unbreakable. Their attack on the human world is going as planned also, and we see that a stressed Yi attempts to gain a demon's attention. He plans to head to the Doom Formation, but his comrades are attacked. Wong's mother wonders where Wong could possibly be, but his father reminds her that they never have to worry about him. Sunro is worried about the destruction of the world, but Wong isn't concerned as he pulled up a control panel. Wong adjusts them to the highest picture quality, but notices something strange happening on Earth. The demons believe they have the upper hand and demand that the humans surrender, however Yi points out that they have actually fallen into his trap. One of the great masters steps into the doom formation and creates doom breaking lightning of the highest level. Sunro is confident that they will win now, but Wang can sense that something is not right. Yi's celebration of their victory is short lived when he is stunned to see an absurdly gigantic demon carrier come crashing down on the great master. He is one of only seven great masters and can barely hold the carrier from crashing. The demon emperor can only laugh at the human race's futile efforts since we see that he has several more. A second demon carrier lands on the first and the great master is crushed. Yi now realizes just how one-sided the battle actually is and Sunro begins to lose hope as well. Wang once again is not concerned though as he has an idea. He explains that the seal they're in is like a game and all they have to do is overload the graphics card. His plan is beginning to work as the demon master can't understand how, and Wong asks that Sunro bring out her sword spirit. Wong's effects coupled with the sword spirits cause all the dimensional lamps to break, and the pair are freed. Wong prepares to rescue the world, but Sunro explains that if he does, his identity will be revealed. He doesn't care anymore though, and leaves. Wong comes crashing into a demon carrier, and Yi is shocked to see the return of his master. Wong prepares to save the world once more, but is stopped by a mysterious girl and teleported away. A glimpse into the past shows a young girl receiving training in a mysterious world. She isn't doing so well though and questions if she is really one of the butterfly race. She isn't able to fly like her friends and doesn't even have wings. Her father explains that he was thrown off a cliff so that he would be forced to learn how to fly. The wings of their butterfly race have a rare magic power of transmission through space and it's one that other demon races have coveted. He goes on to say that he will always protect her from other demons just as several demon carriers appear. Her father makes a tear in space and throws her to safety as he begs for her to run. The girl ended up in the human world and was brought up by her sword spirit sister. She explains to Wong that the demon race conquered the butterfly race and how routine it is for them. The demons conquer entire planets to take their spiritual force and use it to become stronger so that they can conquer the next. The demon emperor has conquered tens of thousands of races and her butterfly race stood no chance. Wang points out that the human race defeated a demon king once, but she says he will see the emperor and his true power shortly. Things are going horribly on earth and Yi can only wonder where his master has gone. Just then, Sunro begins a broadcast and explains how every person on the planet has the ability to use spiritual force. She inspires them to stand up for themselves and prove that the human race has the ability to protect its homeland. The demon emperor applauds her speech but knows that it is just the meaningless dying kicks of an insignificant race. He then sends his infinite soldiers to surround Sunro in the space station. Wang is then brought to meet with the emperor and the girl desperately asks that they follow through on their agreement. She wants her sword spirit sister released but the demon master ignores her request. He forces her to kneel before the emperor but can't do the same to Wang and ends up getting tossed aside. The Emperor is entertained and explains that he hasn't left his throne for thousands of years. The Emperor recognizes Wong as the wolf pretending to be a dog, but Wong only wants confirmation that killing the Demon Emperor will end the war. 
The Emperor tries to attack Wong while he was giving his name, but it does nothing. At the space station, Sunro fights back demons as something begins to destroy the carriers. Sunro can now remember who Jinke is, and he tells her that whoever is fighting Wong right now is in big danger. Back on the demon world, the Emperor is taking an absolute beating. He wonders how he has never heard of Wong before, and Wong explains that it's because if he had a real fight on Earth, he would end up destroying it. Wong states that the demon world isn't his world though, and the demon emperor attempts his escape. The emperor is actually quite formidable as he claims to be master of the universe, and manages to hit Wong a few times. The two seem to be equally matched as we see that the fight actually traverses the entire demon world. Wong makes it clear how much more powerful he is though, and sends the emperor back to his kingdom. The demon emperor doesn't want to fight anymore and is in disbelief since races much stronger than humans have succumbed to his power. Wong explains that it's because of the resilience and the human race will never bow to evil forces. The demon master reappears and explains that he finally has his chance. He has watched Wong throughout his life and noticed how he needed the amulet on his neck replaced every week. He assumes that means the back of Wong's neck is his weak spot and removes the amulet. The demon emperor claims victory, but this would prove to be a mistake as Wong's body is engulfed with power and for once is able to release his power freely. His unsuppressed power destroys the demon world completely. All the demons on earth begin to die off and the demon carriers disappear. Everyone begins to heal as well and Hago notices that the rain is actually filled with spiritual energy. The earth's total spiritual level begins rising and Sunro wonders where Wong is. The butterfly girl arrives on Earth with her sister, and Wong comes soon after. She thinks he has come after her since she has seen his true power and wants to eliminate her because of that. However, he simply explains that there is a cell phone in his pocket and he needs her to call his father so he can bring a new amulet. He warns that she must hurry though, as the world would be destroyed if she doesn't. Later, this war would be known as Demon War 2, and once again, Yi became the hero who saved the world. Life is slowly going back to normal and Hago wonders why the demons would just disappear in the middle of a war. There are still questions about the mysterious glowing person and Tunro wants to know what happened as well, but Wong is finally relaxing after a long fight. Yi would later free Froggy and Froggy explains that he holds no grudges since he is a demon king after all. Froggy wants to take a trip home but is shocked when Wong apologizes and reveals that the demon world no longer exists. Thanks for watching part 9, those are all the episodes for now, but more in the future when season 3 comes out.